Okay, so in this video, we're gonna look at inside a digital scroll compressor. Before we do that, let's listen to one. Okay, so let me show you what's going on in there. First, let's look at a standard scroll compressor construction because really it's very similar in the way it's constructed except for a few, a few minor features which, which we'll review. So what you're looking at here is your standard on off scroll compressor. You've got your suction line here, your discharge line here, your electrical connections here. Inside the compressor, the scrolls are located up in this area here where all the compression takes place and down here is your motor. So let's see what looks it looks like inside. So if you were to look at the top of the scroll compressor, this is kind of a top down view. You can see what's kind of happening here. This pipe here is your suction line. Let me turn on my laser pointer so you can see this line, this suction here. Um, the gas color represents its state in terms of temperature and pressure. So the cooler temperature um, and the lower pressure is the bluer color and the red would be the high temperature and high pressure gas. So what's happening is this gas is moving through these ever decreasing chambers in the scroll. And when it does that, it makes a, a smaller area and causes compression and higher temperature. And that's basically how a scroll compressor works. Very simple, been around for, for a long time and uh, very reliable. So What's the difference in a digital compressor? So you're looking at a digital compressor cutaway here. What do you see that's a little different? Kind of hard to tell, but you see the top scroll is going up and then down, up and then down, up and then down, okay? That's basically how a digital compressor controls the modulation. When it's up, or disengaged, you're not pumping any gas, you're not doing any compression, and when it's down, you're engaging the scrolls and it is pumping gas. One thing to note is the motor is always running at the same speed, it's a constant volume motor. You change the capacity by engaging and disengaging the top scrolls. So how does that work? Okay, so here's how it works. So I'm gonna get my pen tool on here, see if this will work. So what we do is we chop this up into 15 cent, 15 second cycle. Cycles. Okay, you can see there's two cycles there. The one on the left represents a 50% loaded condition, which is right here. And you can see if we only need half the capacity, we're pumping for seven and a half seconds and we're disengaging for seven and a half seconds. Very simple. If you need 80% load, you're pumping or engaged for 12 seconds and disengaged for three seconds. And that's basically how it works. Let's have another listen and you can hear what's going on inside the compressor again. Hold on a second. You, so there's a few things going on in there. You hear that click? That click is this solenoid valve right here, okay? What happens is the solenoid is opening up and allowing this low pressure to occur up here because this is the suction line here. So the suction is at a low pressure, the valve opens up and it creates a low pressure condition up top, which allows the top scroll to disengage or to go up. And that's basically what's happening. So you're hearing that click and then the change in the compressor sound is the scrolls engaging and disengaging. This particular compressor is heavily loaded, probably 95% because it's barely disengaging. It disengages for just a few seconds of the 15 second cycle.